In India, sex-selective abortion is culturally accepted. Rebecca Shaw, co-director of the University of Dallas's program for Indo-American Friendship and Understanding, explains the broad legality of this practice. One of the most interesting things about India is that India is the most populous nation in the world. We have overtaken China. We have 1.4 billion people. And when many people think about India, they just think of lots and lots and lots of people. They don't really think about the serious issue, which is population uh, decline in India at the moment. For the first time in India, the total fertility rate has dipped below replacement level of 2.1. We are now at 2. So India's population is slowly declining. We are a young population, so there's population momentum. Now, how does this have an impact on abortion? Well, as you said, since 1971, we have had the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act. Ostensibly, enacted to provide safe abortions. But what is safe abortions? Uh, abortion, in my non-medical view, is a murder and quite unsafe. But um, this was an act that began in 1971 and was amended in 2021. There are various criteria for abortion in India, and most of those criteria are quite broad. One is, of course, to save a woman's life. We've heard this. The other is for the mental and physical well-being of a woman, uh, economic and social necessity. And finally, abortion is allowed if contraception between a husband and wife has failed, so quite broad. Uh, there, there were, in 2015, about 17 million abortions. A majority of those, 73 percent of those abortions were conducted outside of health care facilities. This, of course, led to the amendment of this Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act in, 19, in 20, of 1971. It was amended in 2021 to include the provision of abortions for non-married women or unmarried single women. At around the time the MTP Act was enacted in 1971, we have the introduction of ultrasound machines mm -hmm. in 1971 as well. Of course, this, they set the ultrasound machines up to detect fetal abnormal abnormalities, right. but the effect of which was to result in significant sex-selective abortions, mm -hmm. where there was a tremendous female feticide. We have millions and millions of missing girls. In 1980, in 1980, that is 10 years after ultrasound machines were introduced in India, we have a sex ratio of 111 boys to 100 girls. So that is 111 boys. This is just an average number. There are districts in India with about 69 girls to 100 boys. So we have a bare branches issue, very similar to the one you might have heard of in, uh, in China. Having said that, sex-selective abortion has improved in India. I want to raise this as a positive. It's come down from 111 boys to 100 girls to 108. A small uh, decrease, but overall, in terms of absolute numbers, that's a good, good, good change. Yeah. And the one wonderful thing, uh, which I'm proud of to say as an Indian Christian, is that Indian Christians have consistently had a sex ratio of 104 of 103 uh, boys to girls, which is close to the norm. Yes. So while other, the other religious traditions in India have had very disastrous sex ratios, we as Christians have had maintained good sex ratios in India. Now, in terms of the value of life, uh, so in Hinduism and in Islam, but let me talk first about Hinduism, there is a strong belief in the value of life. Uh, dharma, which is the law of nature, which we could say is similar to what we Catholics would call natural law, believes in the value of life. 
and it is a sin to kill life within you. In fact, there's a wonderful, I want to tell you about a Hindu tradition where a woman who's seven months pregnant gets to wear red and green bangles. Mm. And it's a special tradition because the bangles are supposed to, uh, when the mother walks, the child within her is to hear the music of those bangles, glass bangles. Mm. So there's a commitment to life in these religious traditions and there's strong prescriptions against abortion also in Islam. And we see that in the sex ratio of Muslims in India, who also show positive sex ratios, i.e. 105 boys to 100 girls. So that's uh, pretty standard and uh, not as disastrous as some other religious traditions in India.